I wanted to take a, an opportunity, Ken, to ask, could you explain what a virtual CISO is and why a company should consider utilizing one? Um, that's actually a very good question. I mean, it, from the, the whole concept around a CISO, there's lots of different interpretations of what a CISO potentially is and what they do for an organization. But, you know, to my mind, it's somebody who has a really good business understanding because they have to be the interface between, um, you know, the business layer uh, as well as the technology layer in an organization. Uh, they, they should really be very technical because, you know, they have to have conversations with the technology people within an organization that understand, you know, what, what are you implementing? Why are we implementing it? What are the problems that it's going to solve? Um, you know, how does it interconnect with everything else? Uh, you know, do we have a secure network design? You can't, be a, you can't be in a situation where somebody says, you know, I built a secure network and you go, okay, that sounds great. And then something happens. Like you have to be technical enough to be able to, to be confident that what's being built around you is really going to be secure and be, you know, take part in that and making sure that you provide oversight. I think that's probably that one word alone describes what a CISO is, is actually capable of doing. Um, they have the business uh, sense, they understand technology, they understand the governance around all of these things. Uh, but you're, what you're doing is you're providing oversight uh, on the whole operation. So all of the groups that within an organization that contributes towards the security and network functions within an organization, um, they really do require oversight. You know, it's, I can do all these things, but you know, how, what's the best way to do all these things? And that's what the CISO provides is that oversight and then their knowledge of how do I create a secure environment? What are all the things that I need in it? <clears throat> the thing is, is that, you know, if you're a, a large enterprise or organization, you probably have the resources to be able to hire a full-time CISO. But when you start getting down to, you know, the small to medium-sized businesses, there's, there's two factors at play. One is that a CISO would be too expensive for most of these organizations. And then on the other side is there wouldn't be enough work for a CISO to, to do anyway. You know, they probably only need a few hours of that person's time on a, on, a, on a monthly basis. So that's where the kind of the virtual CISO concept comes in is, is that you don't need a CISO all the time, but you do need a CISO some of the time. So if you can, if you can arrange on a contractual, you know, retainer basis to have somebody like myself working with you, you know, a few hours a month, just to make sure that, you know, that you are implementing things correctly, that they manage correctly, uh, and being able to interpret all this at a business lo in a business logic uh, so the business can understand, that's where the interface with the, the CISO comes in. And that's really, you know, there's so many things that you can derive from this is that <clears throat> really what I see in a lot of the industry, and I, you know, this, this is shared by so many of my peers, is that there is a major gap between what IT does and what the, the business does. The business doesn't typically always understand the IT thing because it's very complex. Um, and then the IT doesn't always understand how to interpret what they do in business logic. And that is that gap is where the CISO fits in because that person's able to, you know, they're the person that's going to, you know, create the presentations that they're going to present to the board or the executives that are going to summarize what goes on within an organization. Uh, and so they're really the interface between those two things. So it's really valuable to have somebody like that in your organization, even if it's on a, you know, very part-time basis, much like, you know, a lot of companies don't need a lawyer full time, but they might have one on retainer because they're using that person to make sure that whatever they do falls within, you know, legal frameworks. And, you know, it's the same thing really in our business is making sure that, um, you know, those things uh, don't co combine in a way that they should in order to be effective. If people keep getting breached, they may need an attorney there the whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> a virtual so, attorney. <laughs> this was wonderful, Ken. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.